supremacists. And white supremacy has fully come out of the woodworks here in Canada, in the United States, and wherever blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are, and wherever their enemy, slave master, so-called Caucasian is. These are French nurses now. These aren't Americans. French nurses with the same hatred that the so-called Proud Boys have, the same hatred the so-called uh, that the, um, the Ku Klux Klan had, the same hatred that the Nazis and the neo-Nazis here in America, the skinheads of America and Canada, have for Blacks, Latinos, and First Nations. Let's check the video out. Live video from her hospital bed yesterday. <laughs> the mother of seven calls out for help. The distress in her voice is obvious. You can hear other voices too. <laughs> hospital staff insulting her. I did Eshaquan died. What's going on, Israel? I should be K Canada. Israel School of Universal Practical Knowledge is the home of the truth since 1969. We've been teaching the truth. Blacks, Latinos, and First Nations, Native Americans, are the Israelites. You heard about the tragic, tragic story that happened with the, with 37 year old Joyce Echequan. Okay, please excuse me if I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly, but Joyce Echequan, a 37 year old Atikameku, just like uh, excuse me, Atikamek. Uh, Atikamek woman, 37-year-old Atikamek woman, Joyce uh, Etchequan, came to the hospital with a stomachache. She had been to the, you know, she'd been to the hospital before. She went to the uh, hospital with a stomachache. Lo and behold, two two days later, she's dead. Dead. Not only was she dead, right? Not only did she die, but the nurses are seen in the recording that she made before she died, taunting her, making jokes about her, saying she was good for nothing but sex. Saying she's stupid as hell, saying she's better off dead for you know because we take care of her essentially is what they're saying. Like these people have a leader that is an out and out white supremacist, and white supremacy has fully come out of the woodworks here in Canada, in the United States, and wherever blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are, and wherever their enemy, slave master, so called Caucasian is. These are French nurses now, these aren't Americans, French nurses with the same hatred that the so called proud chief is this. We're killed. We've been slaughtered, right, throughout history here in Canada. And to this day, many First Nations, Native Americans, are shocked that there's systemic racism in Canada. What are we shocked about? They tried to wipe us off the face of the earth. Many of us are shocked. In the video, one of the videos uh, is a woman saying, a First Nations woman saying, why does this keep happening to Native women? <laughs> uh, I, I might have an answer. I might have a few points to make. I might have a guess. Maybe because they've been killing us since they set foot on Canada. Since Jacques Cartier and then came to Canada. Okay? They've been trying to murder us. So just, just let us handle it. And blacks, Latinos, and First Nations, let us handle, you know, the judgment and, and who's wrong. Let us tell you about your life in Canada because you have no idea. You you live in you live in a world that doesn't actually exist. The world that doesn't that you're living in that you think you're living in that doesn't actually exist is this. All Canadians are equal. That's why they're saying they're, they're horrified and they're, they're shocked that this happened to a First Nations woman. People are shocked at their systemic racism because Canada pushes witchcraft. Canada peddles witchcraft like, like old country buffet peddles french fries, like Timmy's, like Tim Hortons peddles donuts and coffee. They peddle witchcraft in saying that everyone's equal. Saying everyone's equal. When you're driving pipes through west to wet land, you're trying to do that. When one third of the people the RCMP has shot have been First Nations, who so First Nations make up less than ten percent of the Canadian population at this point. Yet most of the people the police are shooting are First Nations. That is beyond racist. That's genocidal. And what they did to that sister in that hospital bed was a continuation of that genocide. They telling her, they saying to her, "You're only good for sex." Goes back to the days in the 1800s when white men were full out raping Native American women. What do you think her, his daughter was doing? What do you think his wife was doing? Cheering him on as they raped our wives, sisters, aunts, nieces. You can go read about this. I, this isn't tough talk. This isn't bigoted. You can read this in books. 
They're raping black slaves out in the middle of the damn street in the South, and the women walking by, yeah, <laughs> and, and cheering him on. Okay? This is a hard truth. This is a hard truth that we have to face Native Americans. And that turtle god, those silly little totem poles, aren't doing a damn thing. The totem pole didn't save her in that hospital. The turtle god isn't saving us. The sacred spirits aren't saving us. The animal spirits aren't saving us. Put that away. The real, real cultures in the Bible. They lied to you about the Bible, man. They lied to you and they made a Bible, the Bible a fairy tale. But I'm going to show you your life in the Bible. And I'm going to show you the solution to what happened to her. Because if we keep acting shocked, surprised that this woman died in this manner, it's going to happen to another sister. And it's going to happen to another sister. If I could divert real quick, they came out in the United States, in the States, with a study that black children born under the care of black doctors had a higher rate of survival than if they were under the care of white doctors. And they had Harvard scientists say this big giant study. Why is it the case? Maybe because when they come out, the black doctor sees the baby in himself and, and sees someone who looks like him. No. No, you don't know why. You, do you want to know why black babies have a higher survival rate under black doctors? Because of one thing, one thing only. Compassion. Compassion. We have compassion. And they don't. They're cruel. They cruelly allowed that woman to die. And all they did was fire them. That shows you Canada does not care about what's going on with you. They don't, they don't, they don't see eye to eye with you. They don't care. They're systemic racism. They built Canada on systemic racism. Why do you think there are almost no Native Americans in Toronto? Now, do you think there are almost no Native Americans in Ottawa, in Montreal, because of uh, uh, genocidal um, policies that they put in place in Canada? Okay? It's heinous, man. It's heinous. But we need to wake up and smell the coffee. When is the First Nation going to wake up and smell the coffee and understand these people hate us and they're trying to kill us? But enough of me. I'm going to go to the scriptures on it. All right, Isaiah, um, Isaiah 47 and 6. Listen closely. All right? I was raw... With my people, I have polluted my inheritance and have given them into thine hand. The Most High gave the First Nations over to the Caucasians, to the sons of the Trudeaus, to the sons of the Cartiers, the sons of the French, the sons of Napoleon. The Lord gave us over to their hands because he was mad with us. He's upset at what we're doing. Okay? He's upset that we're going to watch some First Nations woman die. The West Indian Toronto is going to watch a First Nations woman die. Canada is going to watch a First Nations woman die in a hospital, and then on October 12th, week of October 12th, Canadian Thanksgiving, have that turkey, have that Canadian ham in celebration of her death. That's Thanksgiving. That woman dying on that table, Canadians, on that hospital bed, Canadians, that's the spirit of Thanksgiving. That's how Thanksgiving was built, off the massacre of the Native Americans. So any, any black, Latino, and Native in Canada celebrates Thanksgiving is disgusting. And he's wroth with us. That's why he's polluting us. All right? Thou didst shew them no mercy. Here's the thing. We were put into their hand, right? For disobedience. But these people showed us no mercy. They showed that woman no mercy. None. They didn't check to see if she OD'd on the damn morphine they gave her because she's coming in with a stomach ache. Okay? And, and back in the day in Canada and, and across the United, all over the United States, they were sterilizing sisters. So-called black Latino and Native American women, First Nations women, sterilized, straight up sterilizing against their will. Doing it right now, down there at the border, okay, with our brothers and sisters, the so-called Mexicans, the Issacharites, according to the Bible, sterilizing us. Okay? They've shown us no mercy, and they're not going to. What are you marching up and down the streets for? Okay? What would be better is if you stop going to their hospitals, First Nations. What would be... What, what would, Excuse me, what would be better, Black Lives Matter, is if you stopped calling the cops. Black people need to stop calling the police. You call in a gorilla to come kill Mike. You've got small problems in the hood, in, in the communities where we live, in the barrio, in the favela. Small problems. You calling in a damn maniac to handle, to kill, kill some mice. Okay? We, we should come and turn and look to each other. And gather together as the scriptures say. Okay? And so now, in Canada, if a Native American woman wants to have a Native American doctor, don't say she's racist. Don't call her racist. <laughs> because I think she has a, she wants to live, okay? And she's under French doctors, based on this story and many other stories in Canada, based on, you know, the, the steril mass sterilization, uh, she wouldn't be racist. She's just trying to preserve her life. Okay? Let me take you to Genesis 27 and 41. These people have always hated us. Black, Latino, and Native American... You need to leave this fantasy land, okay? You, you live in a fantasy land in America. The Bible, 
People hate the Bible because of two reasons. One, the law can't get high, can't have sex with, with another man's woman, can't be a homosexual, can't be a sexual deviant, a child molester, a drug addict, a drug dealer, a murderer, etc., a thief, etc. Can't buy prostitutes. They also hate the Bible because the Bible pulls you into reality. Okay? And the reality is, they've always hated us. It's deeper than our banging on the drums, and hey, y'all, uh, huh? it's deeper than all that. It's deeper than our culture and our rain dancing and any of that. It's deeper than us sagging our jeans and listening to that Native American music, listening to that rap music, you know, arts and sagging your pants with basketball. It's more than either your hair, your skin tone. It's deeper than all of that. They hate us because they see we are better than them. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. Genesis 27 and 41, and it reads... And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. See that? They've always had a blood-curdling, bloodthirsty hatred for us. And it is not going to change. You, you, they were lynching us in suits and ties in the 60s. Okay? So what makes you think? Because you sag your jeans, that's why he's murdering you. They were lynching us and cutting our rods and testicles off in suits and ties, in our Sunday best. They were murdering the Native Americans in their Native American garments, and they shoot women like Chantel Moore in, in New Brunswick in regular you know, Canadian garb. They hate us because of the blessing we receive from our father, Isaac. And they all, they've always sought to kill us. All right, let me get to Revelation 6 and 10. So how is this going to stop? The Black Latin, many First Nations are like, all right, you, you telling us everything that's going on, but what's the solution? See, only the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge has a solution for blacks, Latinos, and First Nations. Many of you are working your day-to-day, -day, your job, trying to feed yourself. And that's what America has re reduced us to, a bunch of, you know, yes men and women, a bunch of slaves, a bunch of, you know, plebeians and commoners. In the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, we are your priests, we are your leaders, and we're showing you, I'm going to show you right now, solution to the First Nations uh, uh, genocide, attempted genocide. This is when it's going to stop. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 10, and it reads, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? How long? The angels are, are asking. How long are you going to allow this? Are you going to watch Joyce Etchequan? How long are you going to watch Chantel Moore? How long are you going to watch uh, DeFonte Miller, who, had his, who was beaten until his eyeball fell out by two off-duty police officers? How long are we going to sit and watch it? This is the angels are saying to the Most High. And avenge the blood on them that dwell on the earth. You see, there wasn't it wasn't a spooky ghost that came and you know slaughtered the Native Americans. The spooky ghost didn't go put two million black people in prison, two million people, two million people in prison in the United States. A spooky ghost doesn't have Jamaicans and West Indians and Mexicans working on modern day plantations in Canada. Go look it up. Modern day straight up slave plantations, modern day slaves in Canada. A spooky ghost didn't do that, but a man on earth did. And the angels are asking the Most High to avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth. They're going to they're going to receive the revenge of the Most High. The Most High loves His children, and it's going to stop when we receive uh, uh, vengeance when they receive vengeance from the Most High. Now let's go down to verse thirteen, Revelation six and thirteen. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast, casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. That's when it's going to happen. That's when we will be delivered. You read on, it ta it's talking about uh, the great day of his wrath. He will be avenged when the Lord's wrath comes. Okay? Marching and protesting is, is ridiculous. The fact that you had to go and march and bang on drums, okay, outside of some, some hospital near Montreal, uh, in, in, in Quebec and in Canada, shows should show us that we're dealing with a psychopath. A psychopath does not recognize the humanity in other people is not empathetic does not know between cannot distinguish between right and wrong they'll just let you die in a hospital bed you're dealing with a race of psychopaths black man latino and native american and regardless of what socioeconomic strata you're in i know you you know the huxtables you got a few dollars and you moved out and now you know you're good you're going to get touched too Ones, ones of us that are poor i don't see white people and, and they're all nice to me you're going to get touched too it doesn't matter what socioeconomic strata we're in, whatever socioeconomic class we're in, we're going to feel the uh, uh, oppression of the devil. 
one you call so called Caucasian, until the Most High shakes the stars from heaven, where the stars from heaven, the governments, the people we look up to, they have to be shaken like a fig tree. Okay? They have to be uh, uh, hurt and pushed out of the way. Native American women will stop dying on hospital beds, stop being sterilized, stop losing their children. Black women will stop losing their children under so-called white doctors. When the stars of heaven, the people we look up to, the people that are on top, when they're pushed out of the way, and you have to go to your to the Most High, ask Him to push these people out of the way in Canada, to push them out of the way in the United States. The Lord's going to remove power from them, and He's going to give it to us, blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay. Let me get one more if I could. I want to get Jeremiah 30 and 14. Now, the uh, uh, premier of Quebec, Legault, said, you know, he said we're working on it in terms of the systemic racism against First Nations. First of all, if there's a terrorist attack in Quebec, I'm not advocating for it at all. But if there's some Arab bloom stuff up in Quebec, what, what, what would they do? They'd send the Canadian military. They'd ask, they'd ask for the information from every intelligence service in the Western world, at least. Mossad, MI6, Scotland Yard. <laughs> they, they call Sherlock Holmes, okay? The Scotland Yard, MI6, they call Sherlock in them, okay? CIA, FBI, everybody to figure out why did he do this, what was his ideologies, etc. But when you die, what do they say? Oh, well, we'll work on it. How long, First Nations, so-called Native Americans, how long have they been saying we'll work on it? How long have they been saying well, we're working on giving you fair and equal treatment? And they never do. And they never do, all right? Jeremiah uh, chapter 30 and verse 16 Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. They devoured that sister. Sat there and watched her die, tortured her. And they devoured us in Canada, low-income housing. Devoured us with straight-out uh, lynching. Okay? Many of you don't know that they also lynched Native Americans in Canada. Raped black women during the time of slavery. Those crimes have went unanswered. They've devoured us. And they're going to be devoured. Whole prison systems... Whole towns in Canada are fed off of blacks and Latinos going to prison. They devour us, and they're going to be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. They're your adversary, black man, Latino, First Nations. They are our adversary, not our friend. Shouldn't be shocked when one of us goes over there and dies. We think we're totally safe. We think we're totally safe, and again, with our native culture, and all of our, you know, native uh, traditions and rituals, we think we're safe underneath the devil, the slave master. It goes to show you that that's not the way. The truth is the scriptures, okay? The Bible has Native American, real Native American culture, all right? And we would know that they are our adversaries. And they're going into captivity. They're going, those French nurses are going into slavery, okay? All so-called French, all so-called Caucasians, and any race that has oppressed us, that's devoured us, the Chinese, Africans, etc., they're going into captivity. They're going into slavery. Okay, let's read on. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. They're going to be given for a prey. The French, Canadians, Americans are going to be given for a prey by the Most High. That's what's going to happen, First Nations. So there's no use banging on a drum and walking up the street to a hospital and crying because they murdered us. They've always murdered us. They are our adversaries. Okay? we should do after the sister's death is we should build and have our own midwives our own doctors our own gynecologists that's why in the scriptures in Exodus first chapter Pharaoh had to go to the Hebrew midwives because we were doing things on our own and because we knew at that time it wasn't safe to go to those Egyptian midwives because the babies were dying under them as well just like they dying under the so-called white woman okay and the so-called white doctors excuse me Caucasian doctors dying at a higher rate 